Remember the verse we started with, we're in the chapter. Unlike the world, Jesus thought that true peace is calm and confidence in the midst of conflict. It's not the absence of conflict, but it's having that peace in the midst of conflict. And I think when you're in a conflict or in any circumstance where you shouldn't have peace, where the, you know, it, it would by just worldly standards, right, by yeah. worldly standards, you know, you mean you absolutely know this is peace. That that God is giving me. Not as the world is. Exactly. Because the world doesn't give you that kind no, of peace. No. It passes understanding. When you can stand there and there's no visible reason for you to have peace, everything's going wrong around you, and yet you have yeah, peace. peace. You it, know it. You just know it. It doesn't have to have under it passes, it surpasses yeah, understanding, yeah. right? So so think about these circumstances, right? You know when Jesus was going across the Sea of Galilee with his disciples and he said, we're, we're going to get in the boat, we're going to go to the other side, right? And a great storm arose as they were crossing, and the apostles woke the calm and sleeping Prince of Peace. Right? That's right. In the middle of the storm, these, these guys, some of these guys are fishermen who have grown up and lived on the Sea of Galilee. This is not the first time they saw a stormy Absolutely weather. Absolutely not. So it had to be a pretty bad one. And Jesus is sound asleep. At peace. So the apostles said to him, Don't you care that we're perishing? That's prayer, by the way. Yes, it is. That's a very bad prayer. Well, conversation with Jesus, that's yeah. prayer, the way I yes, see it, it right? Yeah. And that's what they're, Don't you care we're perishing? So it says in Mark 4 39, Then he arose and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. So after rebuking the storm, he continued to rebuke the disciples for their lack of faith. They were looking to Jesus for their solution without looking at Jesus and learning. They weren't inspired by his peace nor motivated to Im imitate it. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's, think about that. I mean, that's really important that we have to see fixing your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith, you've got to see him and his life as the perfect example of our lives. Well, because of the fact that they were focused on the situation, that fear came in. So that, that's why there was no faith. Okay, I want to, I, we're, we're going to run out of time here. And I want, to, I want to end on a really, really important point, okay? This is absolutely, write this down. <laughs> okay. The English word peace comes from the Latin word pacem, pax, okay? Yes. Now that word is rooted in the word for pact, okay. a pact. Mm -hmm. A pact is an agreement or a covenant between two parties. Right. Peace comes from a covenant between two parties. We need to remember, as those disciples apparently had not, that Jesus had told them that they were going to go to the other side. When Jesus speaks something, he has made a pact with us. Mm -hmm. Every word of God, he watches over his word to perform it. All of his words are a covenant with us. Mm -hmm. All right? And no promise that he has promised has failed to come to pass. Okay? So, listen. This is what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Listen. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have Peace. John 16, 33. The Lord said to all who will come to him, Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercy shown to David. Isaiah 55, 3. So continuing in that same chapter of Isaiah 55, right, where God proclaims that his word never fails, that it always accomplishes his purpose, right, he says, for you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Isaiah 55, 12. I hope 
that the bells are sounding and the lights are flashing in your head. The Father, because of his love, sent his word, the word made flesh, into the world for whosoever believes. And the result of that redeeming gift of love is joy, and the result of that joy is peace to whoever believes. Remember what I just said a minute ago, and it's from 1 Kings 8.56. Not one word has failed of all his good promises which he promised. There is nothing God can do. There's no battle he can't win. No heart to bad for him to change. He's not afraid of our sin. There's no chaos.